Hey, thanks for joining me with Pawan Muttasana Series 2. This practice is mostly supine, meaning on our backs. So find a firm, a firm surface for your, your posture and with support. So some cushion for your spine, all the little bony points that uh, come in contact with the floor. You may also want an extra blanket for a couple moments we'll be rolling on the spine. You really want to offer it extra protection. We're going to start in seated. Come on back to uh, a cushion or a rolled up blanket on top of your space. Kamutasana means wind relieving and the three series work different exercises to offer freedom of movement, re removal of obstacles and blockages and um, clear energy to the, the point of focus for that particular series. Series one offers rheumatic freedom through um, working the joints. Series two is gonna focus on the abdomen, relieving the wind uh, for a couple of, of reasons. And you know, one is, is strength and, and uh, relief. And the other one is digestive processes and proper function. So you can imagine we'll be using our abdomen quite a bit. Uh, and you wanna make sure that um, <clears throat> you haven't eaten a full meal recently, as this could cause some discomfort. And we really want to have two areas of focus for this practice. The first one being, of course, the abdominal region. So the, the, main, the main stabilizer here is the transverse abdominus, which is this giant cummerbund of a muscle that wraps around almost, almost to the spine, just a, a little bit on either side of the spine. So it's not a complete closure, but it does, it does reach from the top of your pelvis to the bottom of your rib cage, and it, and it is the innermost muscle of the abdomen, and it's gonna offer you stability <clears throat> when you're sitting, when you're moving, and it's gonna hold in all of your organs. Uh, it's already doing these things without you thinking, but it's an awareness muscle. So the more awareness that you offer, the more you enhance its strength and its function. Since it's a little bit tough to tap into, we're gonna offer a couple of exercises just for uh, tuning in. Um, but before we do that, we're, we're using we're using this um, awareness as a basis for contrast between ease and effort. And so we find ourselves a balance. We're able to shift between two contrasting activities, effort and ease. And you, maybe I had them backwards. And, and you can see that in our practice, we, <clears throat> are able to enhance the skill so that we can apply it in everyday life. For instance, when we go through a stressful moment, we can use the contrast, which is relaxation and calm, and we are able to shift between the two in the moment. And this, this builds resilience, <clears throat> as well as um, um, coming back to homeostasis and, and getting out of stress quicker and out of a moment of effort when you don't need it um, might come in, in handy for comfort as well as your health. We'll, we'll start, um, we're in seated, you can be in a variation of easy pose or hero pose. And with your hands on your knees, take a nice breath. We're just going to ground into the space, into this moment. and let the points of contact with the earth grow heavy, <clears throat> melt down, and let the parts of you reaching towards the sky be light and full of energy. And let the breath flow gently between the two, <clears throat> earth and sky. Perhaps you're feeling on each inhale a release of effort as 
the air is given room to expand into your abdomen, to your lungs, to your chest. And on the exhale, there's a natural contraction as everything comes back together. The, the respiratory diaphragm moves up to help push the air out of the lungs. And it naturally contracts on the inhale to allow the air to come back in and fill that space. And perhaps you know there's another diaphragm muscle down by the pelvic floor, the base of the pubic bone. And this moves in time with the respiratory diaphragm. So each time you inhale, it naturally moves down and spreads apart to create room for the organs that are moving down as the, the respiratory diaphragm pushes them down to make room for the air. <clears throat> and then naturally comes back up and it holds in all of our um, reproductive organs and um, or organs of, of excretion. And, and so it's very important to be able to release and contract when the time is appropriate. So on the inhale, everything releases, makes space, grow big. And on the exhale, a natural, gentle contraction, the pelvic floor and the respiratory diaphragm, and then that giant transverse abdominis in the middle. So focus on that on your next few breaths, inhaling and letting everything loose and expand. And exhaling, let everything contract gently come back together, feeling the structure and support of the two diaphragms and the transverse abdominis. <clears throat> Our first exercise is going to be a Kapalabhati breathwork or pranayam. And it's going to get us in tune with the uh, the respiratory um, muscles down by the belly. So you might want to put your hand just uh, below, on or below your belly button. And for a couple of breaths, just feel its movement. It should push out towards your hand on the inhale and come back in towards your spine on the exhale. It's the natural movement of the abdomen and the diaphragm and the lungs is out on the inhale back in on the exhale. Kapalabhati or shining skull is a forceful exhale and a passive inhale. So when we forcefully push the air out, that natural reaction is to allow the air to come back in, um, hence our survival. And I'll show you a couple and then we'll do three rounds together. We're gonna do this very gently, slowly, because this is a to, to cause awareness, to be mindful. And later you can, you can bring in more, more force to strengthen the, the abdomen and to get more benefit or a different experience out of the breath. So we'll start with a nice deep inhale. Maybe your spine lengthens as you bring the breath in. And a full but gentle exhale. Feel everything coming back towards center line. And now we'll take about a three quarters breath in of what you just did. And the exhale will look like this. Maybe you can see that the exhale is out the nose and I just allow the inhale to come back in. We're gonna do 10 of these in one round. Take a nice deep breath. And a gentle full exhale. And a three quarters breath to begin. And then return to a normal in and exhale. I forgot to mention you might want a, a tissue or a Kleenex handy. It does clear the pathways as well as create a, a mental clarity. Take another deep breath in. We're gonna do 
12 on this next round. And a full, complete, gentle exhale. Feel everything come back towards center line with a little effort. And now inhale three quarters of a breath and begin. Return to normal, that heart rate come back to normal. Let the breath return. <clears throat> to homeostasis. And our last round, take a nice full inhale. A full exhale. We're gonna do 15, if there's any pain or discomfort, make it more gentle, or you can, of course, just continue to breathe normally. Inhale three quarters and begin. And release. Come back to a normal breath. Feel any adjustments you might have made in your postures. This does use a lot of muscles. And just notice what may have happened, your journey. This breath is truly different each time you try it. Again, not to be done on a full stomach. <clears throat> Great. Now we're gonna come down onto our backs to begin the Palamutasana series two. I'd like us to start in Shavasana. Our ultimate homeostasis. So this is, a, this is our restore and repair. So your feet are out to the corners of your mat, your toes flop out to the sides. Arms about 45 degrees from the body with the palms face up. Find support for all of the curves of your spine, whether that's moving the, the sits bones down towards your feet, moving the flesh of your, of your rump. And the, the shoulder blades can come in towards center line and down towards the pelvis. This creates opening in the chest. And find a comfortable position for your chin so that your neck is well supported. And your breath is slow and gentle, about the quietest that it gets. And here you can count the breath in and out. Maybe your exhale is a little bit longer than your inhale. But determine a cadence. So maybe you have a count in of six, and a count out of six or seven. Notice the heart rate, the back side of the body melting into the mat. The shoulders are heavy, the pelvis is heavy. And remember that count, you might use it again. And now we wanna bring the feet together, arms down at our sides. Bring the toes towards the ceiling. And imagine an imaginary floor beneath the surface of your feet. And just with your mind's eye, allow all the points of contact at the bottoms of your feet to match with that imaginary floor. Engage the legs and, and the abdominals, the transverse abdominus. And as you might have felt on an exhale, 
bring it all together to adjust the, low, the length of the low spine, make it long. The shoulders are away from the ears and there's a stretch down through the fingertips. You can lay your palms flat on the floor. You can also put them at your side. If you can imagine, we're coming into a mountain pose. We'll call this mat mountain. You can tuck your chin towards your chest just to get length in your neck. So the crown of the head is reaching towards your imaginary sky. The, the real engagement here is pretend that a giant is picking you up and you want to maintain this position. So don't overdo it. We don't want to get too tense. We just want to be aware. Now find a new, a new rhythm for your breath, a new cadence where your relaxation might have been six counts in and six counts out. Create a Ujjayi breath with three or four counts in and three or four counts out. So you can imagine we're constricting the back of our throat, creating a little heat, a little resistance, a little focus. And we're making it just a little bit faster so that we can, so we can integrate it into movement. So cultivate that breath. The awareness of your posture in that mountain. And we're going to begin with some leg lifts, starting on the left side, using that transverse abdominis to lift the leg. Take the strain out of the leg muscles. Of course, your legs are going to be active, but the more that you engage that transverse abdominis, the more you can tune in, the more it does the work. So take a breath. Ujjayi. And on your next inhale, take your left leg. Keep it straight and lift it only as high as it goes. Staying straight and exhale, lower it back down. We're going to do six of these. Don't quite let your heel touch and inhale, draw it back up. Tune in with that transverse abdominis. Keep the shoulder blades close or next to the earth. Think about the posture of the rest of your body. How much can you use the, the core of your body to lift the leg? One more. Let the left leg land next to the right. Come back to your mat mountain. Your ujjayi breath of three or four counts on each inhale and each exhale. Feel your heart rate return to normal. Relax the shoulders away from the ears and prepare for the right side. On the next inhale, lift the right leg using the core of your body. The focus on the leg is to keep it straight to move it slowly and smoothly, and only take it as high as your core and your the back muscles of your leg will let you, right? So if it's only uh, 45 degrees, that's okay. If it's only 30, that's fine. Is your entire pelvis connected to the earth? Back side of the pelvis. Are you even on both sides? Let's do one more. Two 
Return to your mat mountain. Engage in Ujjayi breath and feel the heart rate slow with each breath. We have to increase the inhale and exhale to, to bring more oxygen in. Please do. Knowing that you can come back to that lower count. It just means that our, our lungs are adjusting to the activity. You might want to bring your hand underneath your cheeks, lower cheeks. We're going to lift both legs at the same time. And here we're only going to do three. So place your awareness into the palms of your hands and your shoulders. Come back to your Ujjayi breath. On the inhale, we're going to lift both legs again, keeping them long and straight. that ujjayi breath to control, focus the energy, and that transverse abdominis is doing the bulk of the work. Let your feet come back to the mat. Release the hands, and now we'll go straight into our Shavasana, finding homeostasis. The breath easily becomes smoother and longer, gentle. Feel the heart rate lower. Feel the back side of your body melting into the mat. And then return to your mat mountain. Legs come together, arms at your side, palms down or facing your thighs and let your fingers point down towards your toes. Create a stretch, a little stretch through your arms and your fingers. We're gonna draw circles with our legs now. So keeping them straight, tune into that transverse abdominis. Really allow it to do the work. On an inhale, Lift the left leg and begin to circle up one way or the other to the top. And exhale back down to center. We're going to do three at each direction. Inhale, draw a circle up, big or small as you need to. Exhale back down. And inhale back up. Let everything be stabilized by that core of your body. Reverse direction. Inhale back up. Exhale around. Inhale up. Hopefully you feel a difference in the amount of work your leg would normally do to the amount it's doing because you've really tuned in with that, that core stabilizer in the center of your body. And as you lower, come back to your mat mountain. Engage the bottoms of the feet, the shoulders away from the ears. Your ujjayi breath. Find your homeostasis. And prepare for the right leg. And your inhale. You're gonna lift it up and circle it to one side, up to center top. Exhale back around.
Where is your chin? How is the alignment of your neck? At the bottom of this circle, reverse direction. Bring it back up. With that ujjayi breath, nourish the transverse abdominis as it, as it does the front of the work here. And then lower back into your mat mountain. And back to center, both in your mind and your body. Ujjayi breath for counts of three or four. Notice what's going on inside of your body on each breath. And once again, bring your palms and your cheeks for support as we're gonna be doing both legs in a circle together. Um, three in each direction. So when you're ready, come back to, to cultivating your ujjayi breath. That constriction as though you're making the sound of the ocean on each inhale and exhale. Yet you're breathing through your nose. And on the next inhale, sweep up both legs, keep the feet together as you draw circles. Exhale back down. Inhale up. And exhale down. Make your circles as big or small as you need to to maintain um, your composure and the motion. Now reverse direction and inhale back up. Maybe you feel a little uh, movement in your belly. Not just the muscles, but the organs doing their job. Make your way back onto the mat or the floor and come out to Shavasana, the contrast effort into ease. Allow as much tension as you can to be released on each exhale as the Ujjayi breath is released. The breath becomes smooth, slow, and gentle. The shoulders relax towards the floor, towards your pelvis. The pelvis relaxes, the thighs relax. The jaw and the tongue relax. And the heart begins to relax. The lungs begin to relax. And we move center line again. Back to our mat mountain. Cultivate Ujjayi breath. Find connection through the bottoms of the feet into your imaginary floor. And come to attention through the legs, pelvis, abdominals, chest, shoulders, down through the fingers, up through the crown of the head. Maybe check, you tuck in the chin. And your breath comes to that three or four counts in, three or four counts out. So really, it's whatever works for you in these exercises. It might change from day to day. You might find something that you can stick with for a while. Now we're, now we're gonna have the fun part. We're gonna ride the bicycle. 
So if you bring the left knee to the chest, don't grab it, you just let it uh, hinge, I guess. And on an inhale, we're gonna lift and push that foot towards the sky. And as we exhale, it comes towards the floor, right knee comes towards the chest. Just a long drawn out way of saying, let's start riding, start pedaling. And now we inhale, lift the right leg, and exhale, the left knee comes in. Inhale, switch. Exhale, switch. Keep going. Moving with the breath, coordinating the, the pedals, getting some neat movement through the knees and the hips, and also some rhythm between the movement and the breath. Two more breaths. And bring both knees into the chest. You can grab them if you want, rock from side to side, or simply focus on your, your dry breath and your heart rate. Or just the beating of the heart, you don't have to actually monitor the rate to notice a change. You can feel the intensity. You can get a sense of its rhythm. And now we're gonna do both legs together. No, we're not. We're gonna reverse direction. We're gonna pedal backwards. So on an inhale, take the left leg, push it down across the floor, and as it comes up to the ceiling, the right leg pushes across the floor. And exhale, and then switch and inhale, switch and exhale. Find your own rhythm, your own movement. Keep the shoulders down towards the pelvis. Relax the jaw. Use that transverse abdominus. Two more breaths. Bring the knees to the chest. Again, <clears throat> you can hug it for a release or simply monitor the inner workings of your body as you lie on the floor and breathe. Now, after two more breaths, we're going to do both legs together. Again, Keeping the feet together and pushing the pedals at um, your own rate, just coordinating with the breath. When you're ready, you can start in the forward or the backwards motion. We're going to do three in each direction. So inhale and extend the legs. And exhale, bring them back in towards the chest. Using the core muscle of your body as a primary mover or stabilizer in this case. And then reverse direction on the next breath. With the breath to guide your motions. And the core stabilize your being. And from here, come right out into a Shavasana. Pausing here to restore and revitalize. Allow the backside of the body to sink down 
towards the surface beneath you. Do a quick scan of the body from the toes all the way up, through limbs, through the core, through your neck and your head, offering soothing and peace to any places of tension or obstruction. Then the breath be smooth. And long. A longer exhale will immediately allow your relaxation system, the parasympathetic nervous system, to engage, lowering the heart rate and blood pressure, calming the nerves and signals from the brain to the body and back. And now, coming back to center line, we're going to be rolling around on our spine a little bit. So you may want to grab a blanket just for a little cushion along the spine. And come back onto your back. Bring your knees to your chest. You can engage Ujjayi breath. Um, as long as you're staying in tune with the breath, use what works for you. Try to make it even and controlled. With the fingers clasped around the shins, we're going to um, breathe in from the center and breathe out, rocking to your left side, coming onto your elbow and pausing on the out breath for just a moment before pushing yourself back up on the inhale and over to your right on the exhale, pausing on your elbow at the out breath for a second and back up for two more breaths, exhaling over and pausing and inhaling back up. So we can feel there's a nice little roll along the low back and the spine and this sort of motion um, very much helps us with our uh, digestion. And back up. Great. Pause here for just a moment. Cultivate that. We try your breath. Now grab behind the knees. And we're going to do some rocking and rolling along our spine. Uh, some things to keep in mind, we're going to keep the nose towards the knee so that as you roll back towards your head, um, you don't hit your head on the ground. So when you're ready, you can kind of get some momentum by bringing your feet up and then kicking forward about three times, moving with the breath. Inhaling back and exhaling forward. One more. And come back down. Find your mat mountain. Engage the bottoms of your feet, arms alongside, fingers at attention. Let the ujjayi breath fill and Engage your abdominals, filling on the inhale, engage it on the exhale. And this is going to be the Palamuktasana pose of the Palamuktasana series. And so there's one pose dedicated to wind relieving of the system, and this is it. Um, all the rest is 
the generic when relieving um, exercise series, but this one pose is very dedicated to relieving wind from the abdominal area. Um, so keep that in mind. If you ever want to isolate this one pose, you know, sitting on the on the floor while you're watching TV, if you think you want to move through this, um, you can do this. It's very, it's very simple. But there's a couple of things to keep in mind. And one is to always start on the right side. So always use the right knee first because um, it moves in line with the motion of digestion, which the large intestine comes up the right side, across the midsection, and down the left side, and that promotes um, elimination. So you don't want to go the opposite way. We're so trying to help things out. All right, we're going to come back to our Ujjayi breath. Inhale, three or four. Exhale, three or four. Bring that right knee in towards your chest. And clasp the fingers around the shin. Um, you can bring it in fairly tight, out towards your shoulder, or just in towards your, the, um, just alongside. Take a nice deep breath in, maybe now to a count of seven. Nice and full, the belly and the chest, front and back and sides all fill up. And when you've reached your limit, begin to exhale, draw the nose towards the knee and the knee towards the nose. You're at least counting to seven, maybe more, because you want all that wind out of your system. And at the base of your exhale, hold the breath out for three counts. And then release everything back into your mat mountain. And engage your ujjayi breath and your original rhythm. And then bring the knee back in, fingers around the shin. Draw it up a little bit closer if you can. And inhale, count of seven. Let the whole torso fill with the, with the air. Reverse direction and exhale everything out as your knee and your nose come towards each other. We're really expelling the air, bringing everything in close. And at the end of the exhale, hold your breath out for three to five counts. Hold but don't strain. And then release back that mountain. Original Ujjayi breath. Let everything settle back into homeostasis. And one more time. Right knee to the chest or shoulder. Take a nice deep breath. Count to seven. Fill everything. And exhale, nose to knee and knee to nose. Put it all out and hold now for three to seven counts. And return to your mat mountain. Take an extra breath here. Tune in to the alignment of your body. The center line of the body. And now bring the left knee to the chest or shoulder. Clasp the fingers around the shin. And keep the right foot at attention. And inhale to a count of seven. And as you begin to exhale, the knee and nose come together. Feel everything empty out of your abdominal and midsection. You can really come into a tight ball and hold the out breath for about three counts. And release that mountain. 
Let your mind follow the breath. Draw the left knee in. You can try a different spot this time. If it was at your chest, you can try your shoulder, somewhere in between. Take a nice inhale to a count of seven. Begin to exhale, let everything out. Nose towards knee and knee towards nose. And hold it out for a count of three to five. Gently release back to your mountain pose. Come back to your breath of three or four counts. And draw the left knee to your chest one more time. Inhale to a count of seven or to capacity. Exhale, nose to knee, knee to nose, let everything out. Feel how everything shifts around this emptying. And at the bottom, hold for a count of three to eight. And return to your mat mountain. Now come out to a Shavasana for a, a restorative moment. Let the breath be smooth, gentle, and long. Let the muscles release tension. Work your way back to center. Find your mat mountain in your Ujjayi breath. And bend your knees, place your feet on the floor very close to your being. <laughs> so that both feet are still comfortable on the floor. And use your arms to come out to a T. Palms face down. Mm -hmm. I don't quite reach the floor, but um, the shoulders want to stay in contact with the floor. Your feet want to stay together and come back to your Ujjayi breath. As you inhale, knees are at center. And exhale, feet stay together, knees come to the left. And at the base of your exhale, hold here for about three counts. And then inhale back up to center. As you can imagine, knees come to the right. And as this happens, you can look to your opposite side. And then inhale back up to center. I think the cat wants in. Bring your feet away from you about one foot's length. Inhale here. Exhale, knees to the left, you can look to the right and hold it out for about three counts. Inhale, back up to center. Exhale to the right. You can look to the left and hold here for about three counts. Inhale, back up to center. And on this breath, you're gonna put your feet away even further, keeping them together. Inhale, exhale to the left, look to the right. Hold for three counts on the out breath. Inhale, back up. Exhale, knees to the right, look left. Hold for three counts. 
Inhale up and work your way into a mat mountain, holding here for a couple of breaths. And now, bringing the left foot on or near your right thigh. Avoid the knee. Bring your left arm out to your half T. And just staying in tune with the breath, we're gonna take the right hand and push the knee over to your right. So this is a reclined twist, it's a universal twist. Keep the left shoulder engaged with the floor. You're twisting the low back and the hips. And on the way, the hip, if it comes with any pain, please um, come to a twist, a spinal twist that you are comfortable with. But if you're maintaining this, know that it can realign your hip into, the, into its socket and um, all the benefits of the spinal twist. So here, stay in tune with the breath. Um, you're somewhat engaged and also somewhat relaxed. You can use your right hand to massage your thigh out. You can, you can um, experiment with where you want your head to be so you can get different twists in your neck. You can roll it from side to side or you can just pick one spot and stay there for a breath or two before moving to the next spot. You can always just keep it center. Two more breaths and a universal spinal twist. Gently bring that knee back up. Left foot meets the right. Come back to your mic, your, your mat mountain. Cultivate your ujjayi breath. We're almost to the end of our engaged practice, and we'll have the ultimate, the ultimate pose of ease and more relaxation. But until then, tune in with the alignment of your body, the length of your spine. The stretch down through your fingers. And bring your right foot onto your left thigh. Right arm comes out to a T. And your left hand helps to bring the knee across your body over to the left. Keep that right shoulder in uh, contact with the floor. And you can use the left hand to massage the foot or the leg and the knee out towards your left. Again, you can, you can look over to your right or up to the sky or over to your left. Whatever feels good for your neck. Stay in tune with the breath. Tune with the alignment, avoiding that right, that left knee, because it's the weak joint and you want to protect it. And knowing um, that you're putting your hip back in place, as well as the benefit of digestive and massaging benefits of a twist on your abdominals and your organs and muscles. Nice stretch all through the right side of the body. Two more breaths. Gently bring your right knee back up. Right foot meets the left. Return to your mat mountain. Engage your ujjayi breath, three or four counts. 
each inhale and each exhale. If you can hear yourself breathe, you know you're on your way. This next exercise is the series of boat poses. Um, it's not the full extension boat that so many of our classes offer, but um, more like a canoe. <laughs> um, I'll show you how it looks, and um, we're going to do three to five of them, okay? So I encourage everyone to try three, and if you still have it in you, join me for the last two. Uh, it's going to look like this. On an inhale, you'll come up onto your tailbone, and your, your fingers are going to match your toes. You're going to keep your, your spine long and you're going to look down at your toes. And at the top of your breath, you're going to hold for three to five counts and then exhale back down. Okay, so here we are. Ujjayi breath, mat mountain. Tune in with your transverse abdominis. Keep your shoulders relaxed and your spine will be long. Okay, so take a breath in, take a breath out. Come up as you inhale, fingers, and then, and then hold the breath at the top, three to five counts, fingertips in line with the toes. Exhale back down, enjoy your breath. Notice your heart, notice your breath. Notice your shoulders. We're gonna do it again. On your next inhale, come up. Hold the breath at the top. And exhale, release. Fingers down at the sides, pointing towards the toes. We draw your breath, brings you back to regulation. Regularity. Coming up for number three on your next inhale. Rise up. Whatever it takes and hold the breath at the top. Keep the gaze at the toes, the spine long. Exhale that down. Very nice. We get two more optionals. So if you're ready. First, tune in with your mat mountain, your breath, the alignment of your neck. Even though this is an abdominal workout, um, we often allow other muscles to pick up the slack, which just means we need to focus more on the abdominals. So oftentimes the shoulders might get tight, the neck might get a little strain. So, we got it in you. On your next inhale, rise up. Hold the breath at the top. Three to five or more counts if you have it. And exhale back down into that mountain. There she goes. Cultivate Ujjayi breath. Try to come back to center line. Gentle to normal. And our final one. When you're ready, inhale up. Hold the breath at the top. And exhale back down into that mountain. Spend the next four or five breaths coming back to regularity, homeostasis. It's a lot of words for a sense of calm and ease, a balance. And then when you're ready, Move into your Shavasana. In a traditional Shavasana, the feet come about 
mat width apart, toes flop out to the sides, and you can work your way up from here. The shins can grow heavy, you can always micro adjust so that there's as little strain as possible in each muscle. Gravity and the bones are doing the work. And it's been proven in the yoga world that once you come up through all the bones and muscles, arms out to the sides, maybe 45 or more degrees, palms face up, and the spine is supported, and it's optimal curves. The shoulders like to be away from the ears and center so that the chest can open and we can breathe more easily and fully and gently. And the, our muscles here are doing the least amount of work. Through the practices of asana, throughout our Palamuttasana series two and other yoga asana classes. The mind and the body have been working together, using up energy and allowing a centering, focused sensation to come through and allows us to come into a relaxation, a stillness. An ability to let thoughts and energies come and go, to flow in and out with the breath. I invite you to let the breath grow deeper into your being. Use your mind's eye to see the breath branching out towards your limbs, your fingers and your toes. To wind in and out of crevices. To completely nourish every inch of your body. your body grow heavy and your spirit grow light. find your mind begins to wander, bring it back to the breath.
and your next inhale. Draw energy with the breath into your fingers and toes. Over the next couple of breaths, invite movement with that energy. And let that movement work up its way through the limbs and then the body as you find a stretch very gentle, very mindful. You can bring your knees into your chest as you prepare to roll onto one side of your body. Pausing here for at least two breaths. This is the transition, the moment of preparation, of transition. Let the top hand be your support. When you're ready, come up into a seated position. Drawing some breaths of awareness of your surroundings and your position in the room. Join some breaths of gratitude for the work that your body has done in this practice and the work that your body does for you every moment of every day. In preparation for your journey I hope this practice has served you. The light in me acknowledges and honors the light in you. Namaste.